1st of February, 1906. There's something I want to say, but I'm having trouble finding the words. The barrows of silence in the Trader's Wood changed me somehow. Something is gone, and I don't even know what. I don't feel like I can lead my crew anymore. I've only been a captain for less than a year. Uh, Whitlock wasn't a great captain, but she never lost her resolve. I, however, can't bring myself to tell a stoker to throw more coal in the firebox. <sighs> There's somewhere I need to visit. Elizabeth. Ninth of February, 1906. Just above Hybris, there is a dead star. Its carapace is cracked, and the dim glow of waning starlight spills through gashes in its underbelly. The correspondence lies inert on its skin. This creature used to rule all that its light touched. These sigils, the language of the stars, are violent. They burn everything around them. They burned something out of me. I have every reason to hate the stars. I'm going to stay here a while. Elizabeth. 11th of February, 1906. The incognito princess has been a wonderful friend. Her disguise isn't convincing, but her words are. She told me I've been one of the best captains she's traveled with. Of course, she also said she's only ridden on two ships in the Reach. Her laugh is infectious, and her eyes entrancing. I hope she'll talk more about herself in time. I'm going to go back to port now. I think I've seen all I need to see. That star beneath me is dead, and I'm alive. Comrade Elizabeth. Welcome back to Sunless Skies. You probably noticed that the beginning of this episode had a lot more story role-playing kind of stuff than I think I've done probably in the entire past all combined, pretty much. Um, I want to really make a concerted effort to lean more into role-playing Elizabeth as a character. And, like, full disclosure, I haven't really done role-playing, so I'm not skilled at it. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, it's pretty intimidating, which is the biggest reason why I haven't really written a lot of journal entries for a while. I think it's been maybe 10 episodes or so, maybe even more, since I did a, a typewriter journal entry kind of thing. But yeah, I want to make a more concerted effort to do it. Not that it's going to happen every single episode or anything like that, but I want to lean into it. And actually, before I do anything else, I also want to start by reading just a few small things that I wrote about Elizabeth's past. So I went to, let me bring up the game actually, I'm looking at a text file. Um, I went to every little spot in Elizabeth's past, the origin revolutionary, the liberation of the night thing, the spending time in jail, the thief -oath thing, with the earnest agitator, all that stuff. I went through everyone and basically just wrote a little blurb in Elizabeth's voice for what each one pertains to, just to really flesh out Elizabeth's character. Most of this stuff is stuff that I, I think I sort of like vaguely gestured at when I picked all these different level ups, these pasts, but I want to put them down on paper and make them concrete and put them in Elizabeth's voice. So, the earnest agitator is an old friend. I agreed to have their back always. I took the queen's grant of 30 years to enter the doors to the sky to help build lodgings. But just when exploring with the years instead, fuck what the queen wants, I'm not going to be an arm of their tyranny. I resisted the monarchy with art. The ministry banned my literature in every place their slimy hands could reach. Years ago, the liberation of night tried to convince me that light is tyranny. At the time, I laughed them off as a zealot. Now, I'm not so sure. I grew up wealthy, and I hated it. Except when I didn't. My parents hate me. I hate them. 
I dreamt I died in the skies. It didn't feel like a dream. Okay, so that's it. Just fleshing out and putting down on paper each one of these. Yeah, Elizabeth's little journey to Faith's Fall over here, which ironically was actually a place where Elizabeth gained some faith. Um, cost us quite a bit of supplies, a bit of hole, a bit of terror, but uh, I've come back from there to the circus. So started the nature reserve, then Elizabeth went over here, and now we're back down at the circus where I think I can actually make a good amount of money. Uh, because I have a bunch of literature that I got as a bargain from the nature reserve, and there's a prospect here. They want five. 950? Oh, that's so good. Ah. I feel a lot more comfortable with 1600 coin instead of like 500. Ah, they have another barrel of unseasoned hours that I can hold now. So let's get down our terror a bit. We got the new arrivals. Listen to their stories. And for the circus itself, more free tickets. And amusements, down to 11%. That's pretty good. Oh, right, I can try to recruit crew from the circus. 3% chance of success. Yeah, Elizabeth's gained a bit of... A bit of, uh, like, ego back. A little bit of faith in themselves, but just a little bit. <laughs> They're still shaky. Failure. Not surprising. Okay, where to next? Ah, right. I was going to try to find the well up here to continue the Incautious Driver's quest. So let's do that. But first, let's take a quick stop back at New Winchester, drop off some port reports, get repaired, all that good stuff. Ooh, a fungal fragment. So close to New Winchester. I thought they only, sh like, I just assumed because of how rare they were and how I'd only found one over here, I just assumed they kind of showed up in dangerous faraway areas. I guess it's just totally random. Scrape it for supplies, gain supplies, but also get terror. Reduce your terror by destroying it. Study it. Or harvest. Can be burnt for fuel. I don't remember what I did last time. Um, I guess I'll study it. 90% chance. Damn. It responds to certain stimuli, but it's impossible to identify exactly what. It emits the occasional puff of spores, and its pattern of growth seems subject to changes. But why? And how? Infuriating. Still, every failure is a possibility ruled out. One tale of terror, and we've gained ten terror. Turned in three poor reports, which gives us enough to affect the balance of power in the reach. I've gained fortune, or the, rather the Tackities have gained fortune. 102, thriving now. I'm still beloved at 150. I wonder how high this can go. Like, some of these seem to bottom out at zero, like... The reputation with the Windward Company bottoms out at zero, but what's, like, the max for my reputation with the Tackities? Can I go above Beloved? Back in New Winchester, we can... Oh, right, deliver the sapling nods that we got from the Nature Reserve. What do we get, like, 200 for that? 150? Pretty nice for something that's free and takes up literally no hold space. Could use a couple crew. Just a couple, though. Is it worth it? It's not expensive, it's fine. Yeah, 30 Sovereign for 2 crew, that's fine. Let's repair. 78 Sovereigns. Let's store some stuff in the bank. And, well, buy some supplies and fuel and be off, I guess? I actually want to see, you know, I have a decent amount of money. I want to see if there's something I can buy, like a new weapon or something, you know? I haven't actually bought a weapon in forever. The only one I have that's new-ish just was salvaged from a Marauder. Yeah, all right, let's try the Caminus Yards Grimalkin. It's a tier two weapon, requires mirrors at 25 plus, 
and well, let's read the description. The strong shall be as tow, and the maker of it as a spark. And they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. Wait, the strong shall be as tow? Tau? I'm not quite sure what that means. Something that burns easily, I guess. A long-range, fast-firing, self-cooling armament for the captain who likes things settled promptly. The barrel revolves, possibly powered by spite. <laughs> I love that description. Um, I suppose I could crunch the numbers on some of these things to get like an exact heat-to-damage ratio, but I could also just do a rough look at it, because I'm thinking one of the most important things is the heat-to-damage ratio. Because, like I've mentioned before, the biggest limiting factor on damage in combat for me is heat because you don't you can't take that much heat and you just have to wait a lot for it to go away so having something that just does a crap ton of damage but also generates a crap ton of heat is not necessarily that useful so looking at the uh, heat to damage ratio this thing is double the heat to the damage 50 heat for 25 damage and this thing is well better 25 feet for 15 damage so a little bit better, um, 700, it's got the same range, so it's still a long range thing. And I also like the fact that it's a long range, fast firing self cooling armament. It sounds like it might actually travel faster, is what I'm hoping, like the actual projectile might travel faster, which would be very, very nice for hitting things like the Shrivers, because those are just impossible for me right now. Let's try it. Um, just to test it out, I'll actually replace my blunderbuss style thing, so I can just try that plus my old weapon, because I'm intending this to replace my old weapon. There's my original. Oh yes, that is way faster. Let's fire them both at the same time. It's so much faster! That's going to make it so much easier, not easy, but easier to hit the Shrivers. Nice. Damn, the thing is fast. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I only recently realized, by the way, that if you fire your gun, it actually has kickback. It actually kicks your ship back. I guess I never noticed it because I was always in combat and already moving around, so it's kind of a bit too subtle to really notice it too much, but if you're completely still, then you can really see it. Alright, that is definitely going to replace that Marauder weapon that I have. I think the next thing I want to buy is this. It looks like it'd be a pretty good replacement for my blunderbuss style weapon. However, I don't really have the money to feel comfortable buying that. It's 830, I'd be left with like 500, 600 coin, and I still need to buy supplies and fuel and all that stuff. So I think I'll wait on that. I could sell some of the stuff I have in my bank, of course, but it's better to wait for a prospect if I can, and I don't have a huge like overage of any particular thing. Most I have is six trees, but that's not that many. I mean, a prospect can take up to like five items. Actually, with the munitions, we've seen more than five items. I think it was like seven or something. Yeah, so I'll stick with this. This is really good. Ooh, a caddy of dried tea. That seems exceptionally rare. At the nature reserve now. Use this opportunity to do the usual things. Get a port report. Export sapling knots. Oh, hey, hold on. What was that? Export verdant encouragement. Oh, that's an... Oh, the fertilizer can be exported too. Highly effective fertilizer is unnecessary in the reach, and this is heinously expensive besides. But Leadbetter and Stainrod have found a buyer. Now they just need someone to deliver it. Okay, where to? Port Prosper. Okay. The clerk holds a scented rag over his mouth and nose as the fertilizer is transported onto your locomotive. See, it gets to Port Prosper. I still wonder what this deliver the previously impounded goods thing is about. How do I get the previously impounded goods? 
Where do I get them? Fellow captains have nothing particular to say. Let's join the hunting party, but not really. Just reduce terror. Explore the nature reserve. I'm going to need that where I'm going. I haven't done anything with uh, this person for a while. The one searching for the bird. I don't think there's anything to do, though. I've already asked all these questions. I could go on a little expedition, but I think that'll just reduce terror, which is already zero. Oh, it gave, gave me sky stories, actually. Well, thank you. I feel like there's got to be something we can do with that bird pecking at the Mountain of Eternity at some point. Maybe we got to find the mountain first. But it seems like that's going to be a thing. I don't think there's anything to turn in as far as research goes. Nah, I still need a pen of a scribe spinster, which I'll probably find over here, actually. There was a lot of scribe spinsters. Unless it's just like a random chance whether they actually drop that. Maybe it's not guaranteed. Yeah, okay. I think that's it. I guess I just need to buy a bunch of supplies then, right? What do I want the most? I mean, I have so much hold space it probably doesn't matter all that much. Supplies always go quicker. Buy a couple fuel. Yeah, that's fine. Should be more than enough. Might as well buy more, actually. I have so much hold space, I love it. Yeah, this time I'm going up here with zero terror, tons of supplies, a better ship, better weapons, more crew, just better everything. That place is not going to get the better of me this time. I'm going to get to that dang well that I meant to get to, like, 20 episodes ago. Probably not 20 episodes ago, maybe 10 or 15. Let's hope the peacock winds aren't fighting against me, although I think they might be, because all these little things I see flying this way, I think that's like the tail end of the peacock wind. Maybe. Oh, hello. God damn, you came out of nowhere. Well, getting to test out my new weapon. Oh, I like it already. I love the speed. Gain a hole. Do I need to? I'm at 60 out of 60. What happens if you try to gain hole when you already have max hole? Does it just do nothing? Does not increase. This quality cannot currently increase past 60. That makes sense. I'm just curious if something special would happen. Anyway, they came at me so fast that they had to have been propelled by the peacock wind, right? It seemed like it. But it seems like the wind isn't actually here. Even with those little things kind of shooting across, looking like the tail end of the wind. No, it's, it's not here. The bees will leave me alone. I don't have any chorister nectar on me. Yeah. We're cool. Wait, 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 wait. Somebody... Wait, why are they angry at me? Mm. Damn it. I don't want to kill you. Uh-oh. Why they attacked me. Oh, whoa, 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 there's some sort of a wind going on. Yeah, I'm being sucked down here. Gain experience or try to get the nectar. Right, if I fail that, we lose a crew member. 
<laughs> well, I don't really have the heart for this. 12% chance of success. Um, good luck, crew. We lost someone. But we gained 15 sovereigns. That's how much your life was worth. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, the wind is somewhere around here. I'm just not exactly sure where. Just realize they're trying to ram me. Ooh, nice. Damn, nice. Now I'll gain a hole. Back up to 60. I have a hunch about what happened with the bees. Like, I still don't know if it is the Corister Nectar that makes them come after me, although I'm pretty sure it certainly feels like it. What if they got angry at me because, like, you know how bees... You know how you smoke bees to make them, like, docile so you can collect honey and things like that? What if it was the smoke from my exhaust on the train? Obviously it didn't make them happy and comfortable and, you know, docile, but these are chorister bees, not normal bees, so maybe it just makes them angry. Could it be the smoke trail? Like, the smoke trail goes out pretty far. I fucking love this weapon. the parts, right? Nope. Captain's log. I've already read all these before. Sky Story and 43 Sovereigns. How's those damn sigils of correspondence? Creepy things. Sigils glow on these ruins, lambent in the mist. Lambent. That's a word I should look up. Lambent. Of light or fire, glowing, gleaming, or flickering with a soft radiance. Example, the magical lambent light of the north. So glowing softly. God, listen to their noise, though. Just let's go stop right by this thing. Well, can't hear it anymore. I went right into that one. Definitely a lot easier to hit with this weapon. Still not easy, though. Alright, can we get your something we needed for research? Spinster's pen, yes. The crew member sent out to retrieve the object is gone some time for their task. 
Evidently, the spinster's grip on it in death is exceedingly tight, and her fingers must be hewn off to retrieve it. Duh. I like that they say hewn off, though, emphasizing that they're, I guess they're actually made of bronzewood. Scavenge for parts, back up to max. Ooh, that sound over here. I see like, it looks like the tip of a vortex. Maybe that's the well. <laughs> 